The following is a reenactment of a presentation entitled Three Non-Circulating Hydroponic Methods for Growing Lettuce, which was given at the International Symposium on Soilless Culture and Hydroponics at the University of National Agraria La Molina in Lima, Peru, during August 2008. Let's join in the presentation. A model non-circulating hydroponic growing system is shown where electricity pumps or wicks are not needed and all of the nutrient solution is added prior to transplanting. A covered tank is filled with 4 to 8 liters of nutrient solution per plant prior to planting. Lettuce is either seeded or transplanted into containers filled with growing medium. The containers are supported by the tank cover such that their lower portion is initially immersed in nutrient solution. This automatically waters the plants because the entire growing medium in the net pot becomes moistened by capillary action. As time passes, plant growth causes a lowering of the nutrient solution level and this creates a moist air space because the tank cover traps the moist air and this prevents the roots in this moist air layer from drying out. When the solution level drops below the growing container, capillary wetting is no longer possible. So the roots extending into the nutrient solution supply water and nutrients. Thus, we call these water and nutrient roots. These roots have limited elongation capability because the oxygen content of the nutrient solution becomes progressively lower with depth. Now the roots occupying the moist air space experience vigorous lateral and branching growth and have been described as oxygen roots by Dr. Hideo Imai of the Asian Vegetable Research and Development Center. During the course of the crop, the nutrient solution level may remain the same or be lowered, but it should not be raised because submerging the oxygen roots will cause the plant to drown. We will examine three lettuce growing methods based upon this model. The simplest version of this method is a 4 liter plastic bottle filled to within 4 centimeters from the top with nutrient solution. Lettuce is planted or transplanted, then nothing further is done. In other words, no more water or fertilizer is needed. And after 6 to 7 weeks from seeding, the lettuce is harvested. In Hilo, Hawaii, we can get a 150 to 200 gram head while consuming only 3 to 4 liters of nutrient solution. Here, a 1 gallon Gatorade bottle is filled with water and 5 to 10 grams of ChemGrow 10822 hydroponic fertilizer are added. Forestry tubes with added holes or net pots are filled with growing medium and are placed in the bottle and lettuce is transplanted or seeded. Alternatively, some types of seedling blocks may also be employed. The lower 2-3 to three centimeters of the net pot, or seedling block in this case, is actually immersed in the nutrient solution. This moistens the entire medium by capillary action and this automatically waters the young plant. Notice that the bottle is covered with an opaque plastic film to discourage algae growth. About 5 weeks passed from the previous seedling stage. No additional water or fertilizer was added. The lower roots gathered water and nutrients while the upper roots gathered oxygen from the moist air space. Now that's a pretty nice looking head of lettuce. And remember, no electricity or pumps or wicks were used. We had a major brainstorm and reasoned that if one plant could grow in a bottle, maybe three plants could grow in a 19 liter bucket and, by golly, it worked. Educators can use this method to teach about plant growing concepts. No day-to-day -day effort is needed to maintain plants, so there is no need for weekend watering. Gardeners can use this method to grow lettuce on lanais, porches, and under the overhangs of buildings. Researchers and farmers can use this method to conduct nutritional studies, test pesticides, and produce seed. In the second method of this model growing system, we can expand to growing lettuce in commercial sized tanks. The lettuce is normally grown in screened plastic covered rain shelters or greenhouses. Typically, tanks are constructed of lumber and lined with polyethylene. Tanks are covered with polystyrene, plastic or plywood. The lettuce is almost always transplanted and usually spaced 20 to 30 centimeters apart. 
Fertilizer stock solutions are stored in plastic trash containers. Stock solution A consists of 120 grams of solution grade calcium nitrate per liter of water and solution B contains 120 grams of ChemGrow 81536 hydroponic fertilizer plus 72 grams of magnesium sulfate per liter of water. Stock solutions are added to the water in the growing tanks to a typical strength of 1.5 millisiemens. If the stock solution containers each hold 95 liters of solution, this is enough fertilizer to grow over 6,000 heads of lettuce. Wow! This grower constructs tanks by building a recycled corrugated roof iron tabletop, which supports a lumber frame, and this tank is lined with polyethylene. The tank cover consists of a plastic weed control fabric stretched over a wooden frame. Similarly, Another grower takes downsized wooden pallets, cross braces them in an upright position, attaches recycled roof iron to make a tabletop onto which polyethylene lined wooden frames rest, which become the growing tanks. Both of these growers raise seedlings in oasis blocks and transplant the seedlings into net pots, which are supported by the tank cover. Alternatively, seedlings could be raised or transplanted into net pots filled with growing medium. The transplanted seedlings are then automatically watered and fertilized by capillary action, and pretty soon the soil and nutrient roots take over. No additional watering, fertilizing, or any effort is needed until harvest time. The first grower has a beautiful lettuce crop growing on top of his weed fabric tank cover. The second grower is using expanded polystyrene beadboard as a tank cover, and the lettuce is also growing well. At a University of Hawaii experiment station, wooden tanks were placed directly on the leveled greenhouse soil and were also covered with polystyrene. Ground level tanks are easy and cheap to build, but harvesting is more difficult. Polystyrene tank covers are lightweight and it is easy to drill holes for the net pots but they bend when trying to support fully grown lettuce. This can be easily remedied by placing plastic pots under the cover to provide support. Another grower raises seedlings in plastic forestry tubes filled with growing medium. Additional holes are drilled in the tubes. The tubes with the seedlings are transplanted into tanks with plywood tank covers. Again, the lettuce is growing just great. The third growing method is called a float support method. The illustration shows a 10 centimeter pipe resting on the bottom of the tank. Well, actually, there are two parallel pipes running lengthwise in the tank. Lettuce seedlings are transplanted into extruded polystyrene boards, which initially float on the nutrient solution because the nutrient solution is deeper than the height of the support pipes. As nutrient solution is lost by evaporation and transpiration, the extruded polystyrene boards come to rest on the pipes, thus creating a moist air space between the extruded polystyrene cover and the nutrient solution. This gap is typically 3 to 9 centimeters by harvest time. An experiment was conducted with Dr. Mike Orzelik and Dr. Bill Lamont at Penn State University while I was on sabbatical study leave there. A tank frame was built with 2 by 6 lumber. Since the frames were over 7 meters long, they were leveled with a water level. We noticed there were rocks on the greenhouse soil which might cause holes in a polyethylene tank liner, so a cushioning layer of remake cloth was applied. The tank was lined with two layers of 6 mil polyethylene plastic film. The tank was nearly filled with water, and we checked for air pockets under the plastic film before attaching the plastic to the lumber by stapling. Stock solutions were added to the water, so now we have a nutrient solution with a strength of 1.5 ms. We want to compare three pipe sizes for the extruded polystyrene tank covers to rest on. Two parallel lengths of 8 cm, 10 cm, and 12 cm diameter pipes were placed 90 cm apart and supported by the floor of the tank. Sealed Ziploc bags filled with pebbles were placed in the pipes to prevent them from floating. 2.5 cm thick extruded polystyrene boards were cut into a more manageable size of 61 by 122 cm. This was accomplished by first scoring the extruded polystyrene with a knife and then snapping it. 
I might point out here that extruded polystyrene boards have a consistent structure without any large air pockets and do not become waterlogged, whereas expanded polystyrene bead boards have occasional air pockets and may become waterlogged and covered with algae and therefore are not suitable for a float support system. Holes for 5 cm net pots were cut in the extruded polystyrene boards with a staggered 20 by 30 cm spacing arrangement. This causes a lot of polystyrene sawdust. Hopefully a less messy way will be developed in the future. The tanks were filled so the nutrient solution level was above all the pipes. The extruded polystyrene boards float on the nutrient solution. One to two week old seedlings growing in five centimeter net pots were transplanted. The polystyrene boards come to rest on the pipes as the nutrient solution level drops. The moist air space increases as the plants grow and the nutrient solution level continues to drop. This picture was taken the same day that the tank on the right was transplanted, but the tank on the left was transplanted 17 days earlier. By the way, you might notice that a strip of black plastic covered the small space between the polystyrene tank covers and the lumber sides of the tank. A week has passed and the lettuce in the left tank has grown noticeably. After another week, we're seeing a lot of growth in both tanks. At 38 days after transplanting, the tank on the left is ready to harvest, and the tank on the right should be ready in about a week. Yes, one week later and the tank on the right was ready to harvest. Notice that the tank on the left was already replanted, and not much downtime with this system. At harvest time, the polystyrene covers were resting on the pipes because nutrient solution was consumed during growth of the lettuce. Water was then added to the tank so the covers became floating rafts of lettuce. Brackets were placed on the end raft and strings were connected to the brackets. And now for the fun part. The harvesters pull the strings so the rafts move toward them and they can pick up the individual rafts. Here is a raft with 12 heads of lettuce. It will be placed on top of a plastic trash container where it can be easily harvested without bending over. Notice the nice white roots on the lettuce. Now the tank had already been filled with water to facilitate harvesting and this is shown by the water level indicator. Fertilizer stock solutions were added, the rafts were cleaned and replanted and floated down the tank several hours after harvesting. Lettuce yields from the 10 centimeter pipe support treatment were as good as from method 2 where the tank cover was supported by the tank frame. The water consumption in this Penn State float support trial was 18 to 32 liters per kilogram of lettuce in a simultaneous experiment at the University of Hawaii at a high elevation cool climate with high humidity only 11 to 14 liters of water per kilogram of lettuce were consumed. This is a very efficient use of water. The average lettuce head weight in six float support trials harvested from July 31 to October 16, 2007 at Penn State University ranged from 154 to 236 grams per head, averaged over three cultivars, Red Sails, Green Forest, and Adriana, and all the treatments. Mosquitoes can breed and multiply in nutrient solution which is not circulated or aerated, and this is particularly a problem in warm climates. Mosquitoes were not a problem at the University of Hawaii's 1300 meter farm elevation due to the cool temperatures or at the Penn State farm location due to the ambient dry and windy conditions. Possible mosquito control methods include screens, salt tolerant fish, Bacillus thuringiensis subspecies Israelianensis toxins, or by pesticides. I would like to make some general comments for these hydroponic methods. The optimum lettuce head size is from 150 to 250 grams. The water use is very efficient. Usually only three to six liters are needed per head of lettuce, and more is needed if it's hot and dry, less is needed if it's cool and moist. Good water quality is required. If you have poor water quality, then rainwater is recommended. Tanks should be drained after every crop, but this may be extended to every three crops. 
Some sort of rain protection is needed for the tanks, such as a greenhouse or rain shelter. Now, outdoor growing in a dry climate should be okay. Fertilizer cost is less than two cents per plant for commercial growers buying fertilizer in bulk, but of course it'll be higher for hobbyists who buy small quantities of fertilizer. Fertilizer use is very efficient because there is no loss of nutrients by leaching, such as in soil culture. Sometimes plants wilt at midday, especially on a sunny day following cloudy weather, but plants usually recover by 3 p.m. Disease is minimized because foliage is dry and sterile growing medium is used. Here are some brief conclusions. Electricity pumps or wicks are not needed. All of the nutrient solution is added prior to transplanting. No attention is needed until harvest time. Seedlings are watered by capillary action. Water and nutrients are gathered as the roots extend into the nutrient solution. Oxygen roots develop in the moist air space between the nutrient solution and the tank cover. And now folks, I bid you aloha. Mm -hmm.